Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's special edition of Beyond the Ordinary. It's special edition, y'all, because typically we have Monday nights reserved for Living in the Extraordinary, the membership uh, that I host. And all of y'all for light, thank you for your generosity for allowing this space to happen so that we can share Casey Joe Wallace with more people and have this special call that we didn't plan at the beginning of the season, but when the opportunity came up for Casey to be on the show, uh, we had to find space for her. And so here we are on a very special call. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Casey in a little bit. And I want to share a little bit about my experience. Um, Casey has a relationship with a collective consciousness that, and I'll call them a collective consciousness that is called Julius. And there's something in the essence that gets exchanged that calls me to a place higher within myself. I feel seen by Julius, but expanded at the same time. Um, and the depth of wisdom and the embodiment that comes from receiving that um, was really a catalyst um, for me quite a few years ago. And, and, and Casey hasn't been on the show and I haven't had a session with Julius for quite a few years. And it's just a wonderful that when you're ready, the timing just appears right. And I'm so grateful because I feel this unlocking, this expansion taking place within me. And whenever we're ready to be met at that next footstep that we're taking on the pathway, it's amazing who appears to facilitate that next version of our expansion. Uh, so it's gonna be an amazing call today. Um, you know what, it's, I'm not going to read your bio, Casey. Welcome to the show. It's so good to have you back. And if you could, please tell everybody your version um, of this journey that you're in, in this relationship that you have, this consciousness and how Julius is has been such a catalyst for so many people that you've been working with over quite a while. Um and and what he's ready to extend into to even more people. Thank you. Uh, it's it's just amazing, as Julia says. Such an honor mm -hmm. to be here with everyone and the shared intention for everybody to grow their consciousness, and not just grow their own consciousness, but the collective consciousness, of course, which is the natural byproduct of each of us growing our own consciousness. It's such an honor to be here. Um, I have had the extreme pleasure and gift of having an exchange with an Ascended Masters group named Julius. They came in about 15 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, I've had I've had intuitiveness in my life. Um, when I was young, I could see people in the room. Uh, people would come and ask me things, you know, all those fun things that a lot of you have, uh, your intuitive gifts. I, I want to say they, you know, they pop here and they pop there and and then they start to build onto each other and they become a little more consistent. And I now know that that was my preparation to be able to handle this energy. So this energy is very strong. You are correct, John. It is a collective. Um, and Julia started coming forth. I, we were on your first season, very, very first wow. season. Wow. 11 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we've had the pleasure, uh, I've been had the pleasure of bringing Julius to a global audience for about 15 years. And Julius teaches um, how literally step by step, human experience by human experience, thought collective and emotion, how we grow our consciousness so that we can get to that point where we no longer have to reincarnate. We can literally physically ascend off the realm and master the human experience. The, the thing about Julius Collective is they've been human. So they get all of our crazy stuff, you know, that we go through. And so the students have um, really come to love Julius's straightforward uh, aspect of, of who they are. Um, Julius is the lead. They're kind of the lead personality. I want I want to say there there's a there's a group. Sometimes more than Julius comes in, and then so I've been doing Julius for about 15 years. But something very exciting happened, which is what prompted me to get a hold of you, John, and and your audience. So 
I've had a massive shift in my life happen um, right at the turn of the year, about three months ago, um, a, a huge collapse in my life that um, you could go one way, right? You're either going to go down the drain or you're going to reach up and Joyce is going to stand there and tell, uh, tell me, get out of the way. We've got you. Just trust us, right? And I started to experience an even more powerful connection with them. And then something crazy happened to me. So in the 15 years that I have been the conduit for Julius, John, the truth is I never knew who I was to Julius. Oh. I thought Julius was here kind of for somebody else, for other people. And I just kind of figured I was just a channel that they were using. And they kept this information from me, maybe for all the timing, like we were saying, talking about timing. And I found out really my personal relationship with Julius in other lifetimes and things like that. And in those lifetimes that I had the opportunity or the ability to go into a theta state and see this crazy energy that's around everybody and start to work with it, start to open it up. We'll talk about what those are. Um, and, and this is good. And here I am. And so we are just coming into me doing this crazy work. It's unbelievable that simultaneously channeling Julius, assisting people in all their limitations. So this for me, and hopefully for you, is the next level, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And uh, it just brings me so much joy and healing for my own things that have shifted in my own life. And then that transfers, uh, I hope, to being able to assist everybody else to go with this flow. Like, John, weren't we talking? We've been talking about this change, change that everybody's been talking about for years, right? Not really knowing exactly when it was going to land, not really knowing when this stuff was going to open up and come forth. And we're like, you know, when's this going to come? We've been talking about it for years. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, my head right? It gets, it's here, right? And just speaking to the students and so many people and learning, a lot of things are breaking it themselves apart to build this new thing, uh, whatever that is, your, your uh, magic, your glow, your, ex your extraordinary, your extraordinary in your life. And, you know, that's where we are right now. And really we're at the impetus of what I would call would be the root of of freedom. Um, and again, whatever expression happens to emanate from that freedom, that's our divine choice to be in that expression and, and to explore it in ways that the cages that we kept ourselves locked in or the mechanisms that are in place that have kept us locked in um, didn't really fully allow. Maybe we could glimpse it and we were satisfied with the glimpse, but there's something there's a tidal wave of that that is emerging and I believe we've slowly been preparing to be able to receive the profundity of that wave um and I really feel that it's the time has come yeah you know we've yeah. talked about um you know humans want to humans want change in their lives but they usually don't want everything to change like they'll hand pick the things that they want to change, right? Like I'd like to have this and I'd like to have this, but this area of my life is just fine. And this one's pretty good. And this one, I don't want to disrupt because I'm afraid to disrupt this over here. So I'd like to change, you know, four or five things in my life. And Julius always says, well, that, that doesn't work that way. You either change the energy in which everything is going to change or, or you don't. And then that kind of frightens people because they, number one, they're not sure uh, if they can handle that much change, like our, our altered egos, our, our emotions, uh, the relationships in our lives. What, what does that mean if everything's going to change? And then uh, Julius is always kind of like, well, I guess we're going to find out, right? Like you're oh going, God. once you start going on a conscious journey and your vibration changes, it changes the vibration of every corner of your life. S some people view that as a good thing. Some, uh, we hope most people uh, view that as an expansive thing, but man, it's hitting it. It's like, John, we've do, been doing it in kind of baby steps. And then now, like you said, it's, it's massive. Like we're running now, jumping the hurdles right yeah. on the track instead of just jogging, you know, around the track. That's what it feels like now. But y'all take a deep breath if you're holding it by any chance or expand your mind into it and open your heart because 
we've been training for those hurdles. It's not like all of a sudden you, you're put in front of the hurdles and you don't know how to jump. It's like, we've, we've been doing the practice along the day. We've been facilitated by so many things that we're aware of and unaware of simultaneously. And there's this essence of faith that I want to call it's beyond trust. It's faith. Yeah. Uh, that really. Yeah. Strange. It's, it's your soul. You know, your soul knows. Okay. Um, we have been kind of programmed and led astray from listening to our souls. And so it feels sometimes awkward. We question when the soul is coming forward. We're not sure. We want to get somebody else's opinion. We want to get reinforcement that it's the soul, you know, that's speaking to right. us. And now that's shifting. Okay. So we've mostly been listening to the altered ego with occasional visitations from our soul. So we think, and now that soul is moving that altered ego, you know, out of the way and it's jumping up and basically helping us get familiar with it, get, you know, stabilized in it. You call it faith. We call it knowing, okay. knowing we maybe have been in faith previously, which is conjectural to knowing. And now it's really an opportunity to lie Mm, masters it is now an opportunity for you to align yourself with your knowing though we know that you have forgotten what it is to feel what it is to know you question that steadfast absolute state of when you know something and as we can assist you to come back to that energetic space so shall you know your lives your existence your truth and your joy far beyond anything that you had ever hoped you could before. Hmm. Let's get into some foundational concepts before we open up for Q&A and other things, because it's so important to, to allow the mind to expand into, this is the foundation. It's like, okay, it's like, I can understand this, at least on a, on a knowing level that's beyond the knowing that I believe I know, Right. So you talk about the levels of consciousness. Yes. Tell us more about that and the, and the way that you can explain it to us as a, as a progression or an alchemy, perhaps that's available. Yes. So masters in the human experience, humans will walk through what we perceive to be approximately seven stages or levels of consciousness from full ignorance, fear-based separation of not knowing anything about you being source, anything about having any aspect of empowerment, all the way up to the ascended state, which is the sixth level of consciousness, commonly known as Christ consciousness or hyper consciousness state. Each level of consciousness also has an equalized vibrational state for you. The lowest level of consciousness is a very low vibration. This is when your life is full of filled with pain and suffering and discord and limitations and illness and sadness and depression. Everything that feels low and sluggish is in those low levels of consciousness. And it's because it matches what we would say is a sluggish or a low vibration. As you work through a couple of different things, you are working to get back to remembering that you are source you are the fully empowered being creating your experience of thought and emotion through the physical. And also, Master, what you are eliminating is judgment in your life, judgment of all thought. Judgment is a completely fear-based reactionary response or action of fear upon any one or given situation. As you master judgment of all thought, your vibration moves into a completely different state. And so does your life. Everything accelerates. Um, by the time you hit a fifth level of consciousness, masters, gateways open up, portals open up, interdimensional travelings open up, the crazy stuff that you hear only a few can do. And it really is their state of consciousness, their level of consciousness. It is also an interesting place, master, because so many humans just don't realize how much they judge and how much they rely on their judgment. So haven't you ever heard the term, you know, as parents are raising their children, you know, you need to follow your judgment. You know, you need to have good judgment. 
over what is going on in your life, right? And to then learn that that is actually keeping your life in an extreme state of limitation and try to eliminate Every, all those dialogues that you were raised to build your human experience upon and move into a space of knowing that all thought simply is. Through that aspect of discernment, not judgment, so shall your answers become clear, steadfast, and in the vibration of knowing your truth, and your life becomes magically transformed. Mm -hmm. I love the way you described that. And I had a feeling you were going to say seven because it's been coming up a lot for me. And that's a different conversation that I'll, I'll probably want to have with you in my private session. Y'all, the special offer, it's fantastic. Yeah. We'll get into it later, but there's an opportunity to have a reading with Julius as well uh, that I highly recommend. Again, we'll get into that a little bit later. April, please purchase mine. I haven't purchased mine yet. Um, I want to get on the calendar. So it's definitely going to take advantage of that. It's interesting because as we mentioned judgment and I'm so on board with you. It's, it, it, it really is what keeps us weighed down. But then we get into topics like when we talk about the matrix, how can mm -hmm. we talk about the matrix without judging it? Yeah. Great and, question, and, master. So we will describe it, yeah. to you. Yeah. You can speak truth without judging a truth that is knowing the, the difference. So for instance, for instance, your neighbor steals from you on a regular basis. You've got cameras. You can see this. They come over, they take your lawnmower. They come over, they take something out of it. That is a truth. You could say that now because they steal from you, it's a bad thing. That's judging a truth. Okay? So you can speak truthfully about a matrix that has been created, that you basically have created for yourself through your limited thought perspectives. And that is a truth. It is an absolute truth for all of humanity. The way to release yourself from that matrix is to not judge whether the matrix is bad. If you do, you're gonna lock the matrix in. Right. If you can simply accept that the truth has been there and you now are excited to be able to see and know the truth, and that you have the capability and the empowerment to shift and change your thoughts. So by simply opening your mind to the unfamiliar, that is moving out of judgment of your previous comfort zone. So that's how you shift without judging. But you are correct. You see, you are programmed through the matrix to judge things you don't even know. It's such an automated system from the altered ego master. So it's going to take actions first we say mm, first we say it begins with desire it begins with desire and if your listeners are listening to your show they have a desire they have a desire for more and greater and and extraordinary and beautiful and massive and all these things right but more than that master they have a desire to know themselves as source and to tap into that and access that then the second thing is are you ready to move on your desires. Are you? And only everybody can individually speak of that truth. And then when you are, it is correct. You're going to prep yourself to discipline yourself to think and feel differently. And although this may seem like a very uncomfortable area and the word discipline is often associated with something unpleasant. We want to help you shift the judgment of a discipline and learn that the disciplines lead to you knowing all the possibilities of your own self. Well, and then we go into really, we're judging our chemical responses and we're afraid they're going to bring up a, something from the past. That's why we anticipate that we're not going to like them. How can we reframe if fears come in? If, again, if there is a nervous system response that we can be in a new creation rather than a repetitive cycle of what we didn't want to experience from the past. Yeah. So here's what's interesting, Master. And even though this may seem a little off, we're still going to speak a truth. Absolutely every thought has either a low vibrational way of processing it or a high vibrational way of processing it. The way you know how you've processed a thought is if it's low vibration, it has brought a limitation to the experience. And if it is a high vibration, it has an unlimited expansive possibility to the experience. So anything that you have done in your life that you have repeated over and over 
you simply have done a very low vibrational, limited perspective on that thought. There's still a whole nother side over here. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's quantum physics when it comes to thought just is. And your perception of thought is what becomes of that thought. And so as you take your space away from previous masters, this is the reference to the uh, to living in the now, and you know that because you have raised your vibration, any thought will now be matched to that vibration. It will show itself differently. So even if you've had a negative experience in the past, all you need to do, masters, is change your vibration and then step into that thought again, and you will have a different experience. If you don't, you didn't change your vibration. You didn't change your perspective. It's an absolute truth. Thank goodness, because we will say that if you were to take a word and describe what all source energy is, it is thought. Everything comes from a thought. And every single thought has every possibility to it. So don't get stuck ever, masters, closing your minds down and thinking there is only one way for a thought to be experienced. That's your matrix. So we're going to push you over to the now where it's virgin territory. And you're going to open your mind and you're going to shift your vibration. And you're going to say, how could I take this thought that I processed in such limitation before and move it into an expansiveness. How can I open this up? Because there is always a possibility. So that's the discipline is to get you out of the way you think, not the thoughts themselves. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think it's really wonderful also because what happens, there's a, a quickening that's possible. Because there's been there's been entrainment. Well, I'm not sure if I can get through something or if I'm gonna do it, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna take a long time, or it's repeated through my ancestry and I'm I'm working my way through it. And it's all that can be true. It is. But yes. it's also it's also true that it can be shifted very quickly. Isn't that the best thing? All truth is, Master, all truth is. Okay. What you hold as true is true for you. What we hold as true is true for us. That's the expansiveness of every given thought. What you held previously becomes a containment field for you, literally. So masters, you have to all remember, we hope you know this by now, You, this is not a singular life occurrence for you. In fact, the truth is you are a fractal, not a fragment. You are in a never-ending, ongoing aspect of yourself. You are simultaneously being. You did not exist previously, and you shall not exist next. Time is an illusion. You are a fractal in an ever-expansive journey of yourself, always in the now. But, but, when you don't know that, you will create a reality based on what you accept as a truth. And in many other lifetimes and timelines, because there's a difference, and we can answer that question here in a minute, whatever you strongly knew at that time becomes an energy that can get locked in your kundalini energy and the energy connective fields that go from you from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. And these things literally can be hanging like hooks, like obstacles in your energetic field. The more you stay in that likened energy frequency thought, the more you lock these things in, the more you lock yourself down. This is the matrix that becomes developed around you. We can help go in there and lock, unlock some of those key components for you. But as you shift your energies, masters, many, many things shift in your energy field. So here's one of the things that many people do not realize. There is no empty space between us. Mm -hmm. There is there is so much going on all around you because you cannot see it does not mean that it is not there. In your third dimensional aspect, you have an ocular cavity that has a cone shape to it that is designed to just pick up on the third dimensional things around you. When you raise your consciousness, master, your ocular your cone shape ocular cavity straightens itself out and becomes a corridor or a channel for you to see things interdimensionally. It's a theta state of the brain. And that's where you can see crazy stuff going on. And you can do great work in those spaces. 
as you said, well, you think, oh, this is hard. I can't do it. And we're like, yes, master, that has been a previous truth. But let's create a new truth for you because you are not in a state of previous. You are eternally in the now. That is a magically creative space for you. You are eternally in the now, y'all. Feel that. Like breathe that in. It's it's more than just words. It's it's an experience. What a beautiful invitation through that transmission. Thank you. So for practical reasons, <laughs> for relatability, yes. uh, I'm having issues with repetition that I've done everything and I can't find my purpose um, and it doesn't come in and I keep looking for it and, and all these other things come up that prevent me from discovering it because I'm have to contend with this or I'm up and down financially and, and it's, it's going good, but then it dips and then I have to fight for it again and something else has to happen. And it's like, what's, but I keep doing, I keep thinking I'm doing the work or I'm consciously trying to create something else or I'm, I'm doing everything I can, but I can't see my blind spots. And, you know, someone please help me. It's how can we get practical or how can you share the practicality around um, those perceptions and what's possible on the other side of the limiting belief? Yeah, thank you for that, that question, Master. So what is so fantastic about what we're going to speak is that everything is in your creative space. So this is really great news because... We're not going to tell you, we're not going to lay in the space of being victimized and things like that. We're going to lean into your choosing. That way you can choose differently. And that moves you into, into a very powerful space. What has happened to humanity, Master, is distraction. Massive distraction. Unfortunately, because of technology and communication, there's so much phoretic energy that is distracting your mind from being calm and still. So what happens is your brain is connected to your altered ego that works what we call this the monkey mind. This is the repetitive thoughts that you just can't let go of. The constant distraction, the constant productivity to do list. It also aligns with the energy of lack. So this is always pulling you into to a distractive state. Anybody who has the practice of listening to their soul and getting into alignment with their higher self will tell you, you have to get quiet and still. You've got to push the distraction of the monkey mind out. And people get frustrated with that because they even want their stillness to hurry up. Right? Yeah. So you get to practice stillness and quiet. Now, there are two ways for you to know what your purpose is. So first thing we want to tell you is there's nothing outside of you making that decision. You are a sovereign being. And we hate to tell you that that's been a program, that there's something written for you outside of you that you maybe didn't have anything to do with or that you did have something to do with and now you can't remember. We're going to tell you that you have the free will of being sovereign being source to do anything that you please at any given time. So, but the direction, to feel the direction that you're going to be living a purposeful life with intent so that as you move away from the physical, you will feel satisfied and fulfilled about your journey. There are two ways to find that. Number one is always your passion. Whatever you are extremely passionate about, what lights your fire and something does, you may not think it's big enough to be a purpose, but if it lights your fire, there's a purpose there for you. It's only limited programming that have made it seem small to you. So anything that you're passionate about, no matter how small you think it is, if there's a passion there, that is your soul talking to you. And then the other thing that could truly bring you fulfillment and joy masters is whatever your most difficult thing has been so far that you have learned to work through and to help another work through that same difficulty. Those two things, what you're passionate about and what has been the most difficult thing for you. That is your soul 
talking to you, okay? Now, along those same turns, they can end up being the same thing, right? My thing that became was the most difficult thing for me became my passion. Okay. I really lit my fire to reach back to the person behind me and help the next one in line, you know, with this issue through that connection, I got excited about something else. So if you start marrying those two things and allowing the cosmic tumblers of those two things to start connecting with each other, you you're on it. You are on it. But, but just like we said at the very beginning of this conversation, master, do you trust that? Do you? Well, if you have had your guts full of not feeling fulfilled, not feeling joy, what have you got to lose mm -hmm. in igniting and aligning yourself with what you truly are receiving as a message for yourself? But we're going to tell you, you got to get in the practice of being quiet and still at least 15 or 20 minutes a day. You got to get out of that noise and feel now. Your soul speaks very strongly through emotions, masters, through emotions. So your soul is the emotional processor of thought. And most people don't recognize how they're feeling about any given thought. So this is a discipline too. When you are quiet and still, you're not just paying attention to the thoughts that are coming in, but how you're responding to the thoughts with your emotions. And that will always speak your truth. If they are fear-based emotions, they're from the altered ego. If they're love-based emotions, they're from the soul. That's the difference. Easy peasy, pumpkin squeezy on that one. If you're getting paranoid, worried, depressed, you start talking yourself out of it, that's your altered ego. Your soul is like, we can do it. We can do anything. I got this figured out. Get up, get up off the floor. Let's get started. Go make a phone call. That's your soul. Okay? Yeah. Love that. There's so many different expressions for, for energies that can come up that would tend to limit us when we're growing, whether it's self-sabotage, we believe that it is, whether it's nefarious forces that are coming yes. in, it's shut true. down our light, whether it's a density that lives inside us that doesn't want us to grow, or whatever, however it may appear. What's your awareness of of these ill type of faded forces yeah. that, that are in yeah. that field and that we that we do contend with? Yeah. Many people call these karma karma. Many people can call this, you know, trapped traps that spells. They can be all kinds of extra of traumas and limited beliefs. And they literally can get stuck in your field. And you're right. As you're trying to move your energy, you've got a gauntlet that you're trying to move your energy through. And you don't even know that there's a gauntlet there. So you keep hitting that wall, hitting that wall, you know, these energetic walls. And then what happens, like you said, Master, is you start to get these regurgitated ancestral traumas, um, programmed behaviors for yourself because they're right here. They're right here. Okay. You can push them out of your field vibrationally, but you're in a little bit of a conundrum because they're blocking your frequency. So it's like, well, is the chicken, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Can I get my frequency uh, up enough to get through them? Uh, yes, you can. But because you can't get through them, you can't get your frequency up, right? So we've, we've found with many of the students, they can get to about the third level of consciousness. So in the third level of consciousness, master, you start to wake up. Okay. First and second level of consciousness is deeply seated programming. It's religion, it's isolation, it's ritualistic behavior, it's superstition, pure based survival tactics. When you start to raise your frequency, you all know this. Okay. You all know this. In fact, a good portion of you may have come out of a religion or you may have been raised in a very religious family and it just didn't quite resonate with you and you're kind of the closet spiritualist that was the weird one, you know, in the family, but you still can't quite get past that threshold of fully accepting or embodying the truth as it is known. And it could be because you've got these locks around you. They are accepted by you, limited truths, but acceptance is like cement around you, masters. If you accept a limited thought or a limited emotion as an absolute, 
it becomes part of you. That's good news and bad news, because if you change what you know, you will change that field around you. But so many people are afraid to let go of what feels familiar to them. Their trauma feels familiar to them. Their limitation feels familiar to them and because it, you're accepted in that, in that arena. So as we can work with you to help remove some of these massive obstacles for you, you'll get a, whoa, whoa, oh my gosh, I, I can move through. Or all of a sudden I could accept a thought or, oh my gosh, I had a healing. Well, I, what happened? We're like, well, we got a really big gate out of your way. Like there was a brick wall right here, right here. You're trying to move on your conscious journey. And we're like, let's get those out of the way. Let's move them out of the way. And you'll get that massive, your massive belief. But here's what really happens. And this is really interesting, masters. Whatever is around you here becomes trapped in your mind. Now, what's at the top of your head? Your pineal gland. We all know it there. Everybody talks about that. Inside of your brain is the pituitary gland and the two of them connect. If you don't have a clear connection between the two, you won't reach enlightenment. So these fields not only sit around you, but they have tentacles that literally go inward into your acceptance thought process. So as those things begin to clear up, you literally may have the opportunity to think broader thoughts. Like how did I finally think of a broader thought? We had a really great experience um, yesterday with Gabrielle Spencer working to remove some of these vaults for her. And she was having a phenomenal experience with us. And afterwards, it was like, this is crazy. Like, how did this happen? And we're like, well, we could long get into how you have created this with your limited thoughts or ancestors can put them on you. Like we worked with a student the other day and we found in her field, she we found a karmic wheel that was in her field that obviously had her and her mother and her sisters and stuff in this wheel. And once we opened up that wheel, we could see the, the life that that had created. So we described that to her. We helped her release herself through this wheel. So we moved her out of that karmic wheel and basically allowed everybody else to stay in because we aren't working with those beings. And so we, we will not disrupt anybody else's free will. But she came out of that session. She said she, her mother, who's normally narcissistic, she talked to her mother that night. She didn't get triggered. She had empathy and compassion for her. So this is crazy, John. It's about what you have accepted. Do you know how many of you have been burned at the stake or buried alive? You know, all of these things of that it. happen to you in your crazy lives, right? And you get locked in. You get locked in with curses. You get locked in. Do you know, John? That out on the battlefield, okay, so for you, because you've been a warrior out on battlefields before, do you know that if you had intuitive gifts of healing or mysticism or anything in a previous life, and let's say, or in another lifeline time, and let's say it's, it's in a barbaric timeline, okay, everybody's warring against each other, if you were killed or they killed you, they would energetically put a lock field around you through a spell or through mysticism. So you could not carry that gift into your next life. And if you believed that that happened, guess what? It's there. Yeah. yeah. So this gets kind of complicated, but as you're working on your conscious journey masters, these are things that can assist you. Yes. You will get to a point of a sixth level of consciousness. If you are not there, you could have many obstacles or desires to help pluck those some of those things out of the way. But what we're going to also do is help you learn how to do it yourself as well. So, yes, the depths of it. This is all the crazy stuff everybody talks about. You know, yeah. this practitioner can see this and this practitioner can see that. And we're like, you betcha. Let's get in there and help everybody start working these fields so you can open your minds. Right. And it's so important that you're showing other people how to do, how we can do it for ourselves. Because Absolutely. what happens is we can have someone come in and move something vibrationally, but then we have to maintain that accord. And if we can slip back our environment, yeah. our fears, dreams, things that come up. So that, that very tender post-surgery, post-op type of environment is really important as well because yes. it helps us to maintain not just drop back into a place so learning yeah 
how to maintain yeah. being aware, seeing the signs of where infection may be coming in or where there's an acceleration yeah. also so that we can navigate all those is so key to what's yeah. available to us and how to hold it. Yeah, it's crazy. So in this field around you, so these gates and these doorways and these vaults and the karmic wheels are sitting in what we kind of want to call the, you know, the ether around you. So they're kind of in between the fifth and sixth dimension around you. But there's other things in there, too. <laughs> there's other things in there, too. And oh. when we're working with you, we're asking your soul to push towards us basically kind of their priority clearing. Like, what is it that you think we ought to clear? And it is a truth that we've been working with a lot of these vault doors, these these spells and these, uh, you know, karmic wheels. But you just said something so interesting. We've been pulling uh, wounds and illnesses out, okay? We had somebody sitting on the table a couple of weeks ago, and there it looked like there was a big blob of manatee floating on top of her. We're in there trying to find a gate, right? And this thing is just sitting over her whole body. And we're like, what? In the, and, wow. and finally, we just like, okay, I guess we're supposed to work on this. It took 30 minutes to get this thing out of her field. She had told us afterwards that she had been carrying an illness or an infection and felt like it was gone. There it was. It was just floating right on top of her, despite everything she was taking or everything she was doing. Now, um, so you're right, John, this is an energy. It's an energy, okay? And old wounds of how you died that festered and got infection. Let's say you didn't die from the wound. Let's say you died of the infection, okay? That's an energy. Like we can look right in there and go, there's something on your on your right shoulder. Oh yeah, my your right shoulder has been bothering me my whole life. It's like, oh my hell, you've got a wound in there from this other. And we pull clear that all out. So it does get crazy. It gets crazy. But it's amazing at the same time, right? If any of you have ever gotten satisfaction when you clean like your house or clean the car, like when you finally get in the mood to clean something, right? You're like, okay, I'm cleaning this out today, right? You get your tools out, get your cleaner out. You tell everybody to leave you alone and you dive in there and you scrub those corners, right? And you come out and it's like, oh, it's like you get this satisfaction, right? It's like you it, like empowerment in some way. And you're like, don't go back in there. Just go back in that room, right? But um, that's that's also how it feels. It's like, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. But in, in previous uh, applications that we've done in the past doing healing work for people, we would just go in and heal a field. And, and of course, that's a wonderful thing to do. This time around, we've got you breathing with us, visualizing with us, pushing with us. We want you to participate. We want you to feel empowered in this journey rather than just let, you know sitting there and hoping we're going to lean to your sufficiency. You're going to feel that you have the ability to do a lot of this stuff as well, as well. But you're right. They can come back well, actually, we clear the field so that one can't come back, but you can build another one based on your thoughts. So we always support masters that you want to be working consistently, quality practitioners, quality um, applications, every single day doing something to support your conscious journey, every single day to support your vibrational um, heightened state, everything every day to find some joy and some self-love for yourself so you're always creating a higher vibrational field so these low seated vibrational attachments cannot attach them reattach themselves back to you it's all about vibration everything's about vibration agreed and vibrational accord absolutely um y'all i want to get into some q a because i want y'all to have some personal time with julius and with casey um but before we do that, I do want to go through the special offer. It's it's dope. It's amazing. It's like, it's again, there's a 20 minute session in there, but what else is being taught in there? It's just, it's, I'm so happy that this is being made available. Um, April has put the link for the special offer in the chat box, y'all. Uh, click on that. If not, you can open up a new browser and type in beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash marketplace you'll find casey's picture under click on the special offer there 
Um, and it's probably underneath your video as well. Or um, if you're watching this in the replay, you'll see the um, the special offer button right underneath. Um, and again, yeah. we're going to get into Q&A. If you want to ask questions, type your question into the chat box, raise your hand. I'm going to start calling on some of y'all in a little bit. So we will get there. Uh, but Julius and or Casey, whoever's going to go through this, if you would um, share what everybody's going to receive um, from this amazing special offer. So we've been doing these sessions now. Uh, in fact, John, you know, talking to John about the intensity of this, and of course, John's always got all of you on his mind, always. Okay, if you ever wonder if John is sincere about what he does, like he carries his audience into every conversation that he has with the practitioners. What can we do for everybody? What can we put together for everybody? And these sessions are, are, are normally very long and very large. And so for what we wanted to do, just for your audience, which is crazy, is give you their shortened sessions. You're going to be getting um, a little bit of a shorter version than what we normally sell because they're pretty expensive. And we wanted to give you the opportunity masters to have an extraordinary experience. So you're going to get two sessions of these vault removals and you're going to get uh, a special uh, timing session to have a channeled cha uh, channel conversation or reading with Julius, which is also normally very expensive. And we want to combine that because we want to, we want, it's the time for, to stop playing around yeah. and to get some movement. It's time. Okay. Um, we also, of course, have included some of our courses and classes with you, some of our meditation, some of our sound bowls, so you can get more of a saturation of all that we do and things that we are at. at, at we're just going to tell you that this price that you're getting all of this for is less than what we would charge for any one of these things. So um, we're very excited. And it gets us, gives us an opportunity to, to touch you, to move you, to nurture you. OK, to show you that you are cared for and you are loved and that it matters that you've had problems. We want to help you. It, we see you. We see you and we hear you. And so this is going to be crazy. This could be crazy to do it with everything that we're doing. But that is what we're offering just for John's show. And this is going to be super awesome. If it resonates with you, Masters, if it resonates with you, and if it does not, it is so wonderful to be here with you. And we are more than happy to have a conversation with you. So th there's a couple of items on here, just to be clear. Again, there's a 20 minute session. Yes. What exactly is unlocking the Kryptonic vault doors? The first item. Yeah, that this Right. So this is that session. Where, this is that thing we're talking about. So you're going to sit like this one on one with Zoom and we're going to open up that energy field around you. I'm going to get into a theta state with Julius and I'm going to look into your field and we're going to pull one of these doors or these obstacles up. Literally the, what we've been talking about. We're going to clear this out. OK, um, normally these sessions, I, I said, are. 45 minutes long. This is a reduced session. But we're going to get something moved for you, plucked out of your field. It's going to be your biggest one because what happens is your biggest one moves forward to us. And those, you get two of those. So you're going to get two of those wow. doors moved. Okay. Um, if you have a karmic wheel that's throwing itself at us, we're going to tell you and you can tell us if that's what you want. So we've just learned to trust that whatever your soul is moving in collaboration with us is your biggest thing, is your biggest thing. So you're going to get two of those sessions and a reading. What? So three private sessions with me. And then you're going to get the other gifts in the package as well. So we get to schedule time together. Isn't that fun? That's Holy shit, y'all. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited for my sessions. Yeah, me too. Uh, Sue kept yeah. going, let's throw this in and let's throw that. I'm like, God, I'm like, oh. nothing else to do, right? Wow. I don't think I've I don't think I've holy shitted on the session package before. Um in 11 years. Here I go. Um, in a yeah. good way, by the way. <laughs> right yeah. now. Yeah. This is amazing, y'all. Um, $147, two payment option. What's coming through? And again, the empowerment that gets engendered yeah. through this as well. And I know a lot of y'all, all of y'all on the light membership, I know the work that y'all have done, the personal development, the showing up. I know if you're listening, I 
am keenly aware of what's attracted you to the show. And some of it has been because of the profundity of the work that you've shown up for or the depth, again, to say it in another way, whether you've been doing it for a week or for 50 years, the depth that you have traversed to get to where you are now um, is inherently known yeah. by my heart and, and by my being. And so to be met in a space where what else? And how can I break this back ceiling or what else is possible and who, what else is calling me or who else is my soul inviting me to experience within myself is profound. You know, as everybody looks around, every single one of you magical, magical beings, you know, your lives are filled with people who are not awake. We know that this is true. We know that this is frustrating. For a lot of you, we know you live in neighborhoods with neighbors where people are not awake. You may be in workspaces. Do you know how absolutely magnificent you are for waking up amidst the saturation of those that find comfort in their sleep? Do you know you are brave warrior souls to be aware? of yourselves as the all, as empowered beings, as sovereignty, when you are literally blanketed with the energy of ignorance and you are the light that is waking up the darkness. It is our honor to be here with you today. It is our honor to be invited into this space, but we want you all to see yourselves that way masters always if you go away from this conversation just simply seeing yourselves as more then we have done our job this evening mm. amazing y'all the link for the special offer is in the chat box you know how to find that on the website beyond the ordinary show.com forward slash marketplace i look forward to seeing y'all on the other side of my session uh, we'll see what arises after that or sessions yeah uh, Exciting. Ah, so beautiful. How about we dive into some Q&A from the audience, Julius? It's the best thing ever. It's the best thing ever, Masters. Let's do it. All right, let's go, y'all. Again, if you want to ask your personal question, raise your hand, type your question into the chat box. We've got a couple of both coming through. Um, and let's start with Kim. Kim, welcome to the call. Hi, John. Hello. Hello, oh, Julius. Thank you for taking my call. I honestly don't even know what to ask. I'm blown away by all this. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Is there just something that you're picking up or something that you can share with me about? So, Master, you have greatly been taken advantage of in your life. We know that this is a very painful place for you. And yet you still have the bravery to open up your heart and to, to walk forward and speak. It has been extremely difficult for you to speak your truth in your life. You have had much judgment cast upon you, which has caused you to have an aspect of uncertainty as to all that you are. We are honored that you speak to us, Master. And more than that, this audience holds you in their heart and know that this is a safe place for you. And Master, it is no longer appropriate for you to be small. It is no longer appropriate for you to be small. We want you to live grandly and to step up. Master, you are safe. You are safe and well, and you are loved beyond anything that you could ever imagine. And we want you to start looking at yourself that way. You are the most amazing being, Master. And we are so honored that you took these moments to spend with us to gaze upon us with wonderment in the same way that we gaze upon you. You truly bring us joy, Master. You are source itself in form, and we are in awe in your presence. Thank you. Is there anything more specific in a specific area of life? So, Master, you are really called to, hmm, let's not say that, you are calling yourself to work your intuitive gifts 
Um, and you really need to start coming forward and practicing those on people. You are keeping things in a very safe place. And there's no such thing. We don't know why you think small is safe where, and grand is risky. It, it is not a truth. You are not having as much joy in your life as you can when you can fully express yourself to another and be received by another for your full essence of self, but you cannot be received if you do not express. So you really need to stand up a little bit more. Of course, we could kick you out of the closet if you'd like us to do that, but we won't do that right now. Master, please step forward and speak your truth. Stop being shy and quiet. Do it with love. Do it with love, empathy, and compassion, Master. It's time. It's past time, but we're going to grant you a grace on that one. Mm. Beautiful. Julius, it's speaking truth can be difficult because we're so afraid of what we might lose as well. It is a truth, Master. It is a truth. And this is how you rectify that. So, Masters, when you master self-love, there is nothing you could lose ever. There is nothing you could lose when you love yourself fully. That also is the pathway to expansive consciousness. So along your journey of your teachings that lead you into sovereignty and high vibration, Master, you cannot be a high consciousness being until you love yourself fully. They go hand in hand. You cannot spiritually bypass into a high level of consciousness until you have mastered self-love. 100%. And when you do, there is nothing to be afraid of. For nothing, nobody could take anything away from you that will fully harm you when you have full self-love. You have everything that you need. You may have a missing for a presence of someone, but you will not be destroyed because destroy only means you needed something. That's where pain comes from. When you have love, you will not have pain, even if there is an absence. Mm. There you go. Kim, thank you so much. Thank Wonderful. You. Thank your you. Question. Um, we're going to get to some more live callers here. And I'm picking you on a second. Um, but I want to take this question from Wanda. Wanda writes that this year started out with the passing of my mom. My relationship is ending. Financial heaviness Yep. And I don't know where to go from here. In our 3D world, I need to create more income. I have done so much of my inner work. I have no idea what I'm going to do next. Okay. Master, you are not alone. We are telling you catastrophe has hit in the first quarter of this year. We said 2024 was going to be the year of disclosure. Disclosure of the low vibrational stuff in your life. That's what's falling apart is your low vibrational stuff. You're outgrowing your low vibration, okay? But if you are in fear of what's going on, you're keeping yourself in low vibration and you won't move. That's your stuck, okay? You are reacting to what is taking place with fear or with the altered ego mind You've got to move into appreciation for that which is shifting. That energy will raise your vibration. And we are telling you, you will start to have things literally pop right in front of your face. And if you follow them, you are held in your high self. That's what we're telling you. And yes, we get it. Well, but, well, but. Well, but it's scary. Well, it's uncertain. Well, it's not the same as it was before. And we're like, yes, it cannot be, Master, because what was before is low vibration. And you are moving away from that. Now, we will fully suggest that you get yourself around your tribe and let them support you and let them give you some love and get out and explore some of the things that you are curious about, some of the things that you are passionate about, because here's the cool thing. Because all of this vibration is shifting to a higher place, the things that you maybe have, have accepted previously that won't work will work now because it's a different vibration, okay? And we know that you get tired of hearing just trust, just trust, and we say, no, 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 no. Get into your knowing, master. Get into your knowing, okay? 
The reasons things break away from you is because they are no longer a vibrational match. Mm -hmm. Period. Period. That is the truth. If you are afraid of that, you're clinging to your previous low vibrational space because it's familiar to you. And you'll call, you'll have more misery and more discord when you're desperately trying to cling onto something that's trying to slip out of your hands. You've got to move into anything that brings you joy, anything that brings you joy, creativity, and expansiveness. And like we said at the beginning, Master, you've got to get quiet. The reason you are so reactive is because your monkey mind of fear is gobbling you up. You've got to practice you're quiet and you're calm and allow the new thoughts and possibilities to drop in. And we're telling you, you're sending yourself runners. The phone calls are going to be there. The notes are going to be there. You're going to run into somebody. A phone call is going to come in. A weird email is going to come in. And this is where you get to start to say, well, that's really weird. I was just thinking about that. We're like, really? Well, there it is. Okay. And that's the magic. So master, get into that space. The old fear-based vibrations are no longer serving you or nothing would have ever happened. Okay. I, I get that. Um, I, I actually have a part of me that is really excited and I know that there's, there's, there's stuff, but I get like, I guess there is a, the, the fear there and I do feel then stop like it. Yeah. Then you don't get it, Master. You don't get it. We we get that you are listening and yeah. you are wanting to believe it. And that's yes. wonderful because at least we don't have to sit here and have an argument about what we just said to you. But Master, yeah. you've got to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. You're clinging to familiar and we get that. Now, you can go through all kinds of releasing of trauma practices. You can you know draw colorations in. You can get yourself calmed down. Do you know, Master, that the two emotions, there are two emotions that cause you to cling to the past. And those two emotions are stress and anxiety. Stress and anxiety. They literally make you run to previous. Literally. You might as well just turn around and run backwards if you are stressed and, and full of anxiety. So when that is happening to you, you need to get to something that releases stress and anxiety. Seriously. Go running. Go swimming. Go read a book. Go sit out in the sun. Take a big deep breath do some sun gazing okay do some meditating so when you're running backwards you're in stress and anxiety in order to move forward you do the opposite which is peace and calm stress and anxiety peace and calm it's a discipline but it is an action plan for you it is an action plan for you and if you don't know what brings you peace and calm guess what that's your homework for tomorrow <laughs> thank you Wanda, thank, thank you so much and i don't want to get long with this but i i do want to ask how are you feeling right now us me I'm at Kim. Wanda. Wanda. Oh. i can i i i don't know <laughs> i did take some time in the sun today and to just breathe in and relax i guess that I, i've always felt like i'm I'm, but, but, I'm but, I really, but, but come to your heart with me. Just how are you? How are you feeling? <laughs> I guess I'm a little scared. Yeah, breathe a little bit. Just kind of just hold, hold and be it's okay to be scared and acknowledge that you're scared and it's scary to be scared. And it's all it's all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. Just know that about just what's here and feel I invite you to feel anyway. How are you being held right now and supported? And what's showing up in the present? And if you don't know where to start, just start there. Just start there. Come back and listen to the replay also. Oh, start, I will. <laughs> and, and start there again. And then go back and, Master, and to the replay she's again. She's so brave. She's yeah. so brave to admit that she's afraid, isn't she? Oh, yeah. We love that. <laughs> we love that. You know, transparency. Transparency, that's already True. releasing your fear, Master. True. Being transparent and authentic about all that you are being is already mm -hmm. providing you relief, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Blessings, Wanda. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you just uh, liberated. So, what I'm holding for you. <sighs> okay. Carlotta, you have your hand raised. 
Let's go to Carlotta. I was, I have no specific question, just whatever you feel or see, I'd love to hear. Master, are you having an issue with your health? Not that I know of. Okay. So it feels to us that you have a low energy issue going on with your body. Um, we would suggest that you start doing breath work. Are you familiar with breath work? No. Okay. So it feels like you are oxygen deprived, Master. It is causing you to have low energy. So there are wonderful breath work exercises that we would suggest get online, look on YouTube. At the very least, there's yogic breath work called pranayama exercises. And um, they're gonna help you with oxygen saturation. So your energetic field looks very thin to us. It's not good or bad. All it does is look like you are oxygen deprived. And that means that you will have a challenge um, holding focus with your thoughts and your intentions without having them drift away from you into, um, you know, uncertainties, uh, misdirection or foggy brain. So it looks, it looks like you need to work on your field to bring in sharpness and clarity and oxygen can help you with that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow. We can get into some practices, Carlotta. We'll talk about that afterwards. That's awesome. Good to see you. All right, let's continue. Barbara, welcome. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm so happy I, I came to the call again tonight. Actually, I'm, I always say that after these calls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always surprised. I don't know why. Um, I know something's been holding me back. Um, from my expansion, I expand a little bit and then I don't, I stop and then I expand a little bit and I know there's something bigger for me. So I'd like to know why, what's holding me back or why am I holding back? Yeah. So master, there's only two things in the human experience that humanity is afraid of. One of them is the fear of death and the other is how powerful you are. That's what you're afraid of actually afraid of how powerful you are and what that would mean for you in your life even though it doesn't make sense even though your logical mind would say well that's not true because i'm on a conscious journey and we are telling you that you have been punished in so many other timelines for seeking your empowerment that it is an embedded subconscious fear for you to go beyond a certain progressional state without activating the trauma of your punishment. That is what's going, that's what holds humanity back from wanting to fully embrace all that they are. That's just it. Because if you think this is your first life here, you are extremely limited in what you know, master. We are telling you there is not a soul on this earth ship right now where this is their first time. Everyone that is here, even the ones that seemingly are asleep, have come to this timeline in this time frame to participate in this extraordinary shift and change that we are doing with you. So that means you've probably been here a whole lot before and will guarantee you've had the daylights punished out of you for being those extraordinary mm -hmm. beings. That's your block. It, it's a truth. Um, but so that's an aspect of fear master. And that is an aspect of judgment for your own self. That's what holds everybody back on their conscious journey. And so it is going through the practices and the teachings to help you push beyond judgment of all thoughts. So masters, it's not judgment of the person next door or judgment of even the things that you have done in your life. It is judgment of all thought. Do you know that you only mm. bring in thoughts that you're safe and familiar with and you reject other thoughts? That's the first action of judgment. That's the first action of judgment. Everything else is just a low by byproduct from that. You have to get to an open-minded state where you are calling in previously rejected thoughts, knowing that there is nothing to fear from those thoughts because all you have to do is perceive them through love and they will demonstrate themselves through the extraordinary. That is the disciplined practice of high consciousness every day. What can I draw in? 
I am opening myself up to new thought perception. I can even take a thought that I processed yesterday and process it differently. And that will be a new way of knowing as well. These are how you relieve your fears and your limitations, masters. And this is how you get back to the space where your eagerness and enthusiasm is your priority every single day upon your journey and you break through your thresholds. Mm. Mm. Um, I ordered the package and yeah. I, I'm i just wondering what to expect. Like I've got the receipts mm -hmm. and do, I, do we get an email from you telling us what to do next or there what? should be a link there for you to contact to schedule so you're going to get a calendar that's going to schedule these sessions and we okay. are going to get into it and you're going to have a beautiful session with us like this one-on-one -on -one live we're going to get into your energy field we're going to work with you and it's going to be the most extraordinary play day extraordinary play day so there should be a link there for a calendar in your package okay, okay. and uh if there isn't our support team certainly can help you you can send in for support at expandwithjulius.com or john's got support links for you as well but there should be a calendar pop up to start getting you into your appointments start right. piling in because they're going to start piling in fast right okay, okay. thank you thank you so much also, for anyone who's purchased, if you don't get that link for whatever reason, check your spam folder. Make sure that you whitelist Beyond the Ordinary Show or check your promotional tabs. And if it's still not there, email us at email april at beyondtheordinaryshow.com. I would say email support. Uh, or if you email support and we're responding from support and the support keeps going to junk mail, then you never get it. And it's like it becomes this thing. So We'll try to figure out and we'll we'll make sure that you have the link so that you can probably schedule. Um, so I'm glad that came up, Barbara. And Barbara, smile. Oh my God, how exciting. Like what, <laughs> these are the things that have been there and I get to remove them. That's exciting. It's like, oh shit, I gotta do work. Oh my God, it's I so don't exciting. know. Let me hold my breath. And what now? And one more layer to go through. We are in such liberating times right now. And so whenever personally, whenever I feel a contraction, an agitation, a mirror coming back at me that doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah, I go through the, uh, this doesn't feel good. But there's another part of me that's very quickly finding the enthusiasm. Because I know that this is part of what's liberating into another wave of another aspect of consciousness that's awaiting me. So how wonderful, y'all. How wonderful for these contractions, because the contractions are helping us to set ourselves free. So amazing. Barbara, thank you so much for asking the question. Um, okay, let's go into some more Q&A. Someone asked, and I can't find because we're getting so many comments on the chat box, but the essence of the question is like, well, you say to, com to connect with loved ones or community, but what if the only community that they have is through like shows like Beyond the Ordinary or through like a community like yours? Fantastic. Fantastic. And aren't we here? Aren't we here? Isn't it amazing? Right? Like, just think how long ago, not that long ago, this technology was not even available. And people who decided to journey into consciousness truly were isolated. Truly. Like, you were lucky if you could pick up some books, you know, in the bookstore. They didn't even have online book forums for people. Like, this is amazing. That you, when you say this is the only type of community they have, this is an amazing accessible community, okay? We have academies as well. And our students, that's where they thrive. That's where they thrive, you know, all kinds of retreats and things like that. So masters, th this is what you have created for your own selves. It's amazing to have the connection with somebody across the globe that you would never, ever, ever encounter. And you have a common conscious journey connection with somebody. That's a soul connection. That's a soul connection. And do you know how fulfilling and satisfying a soul connection is? Even if you only had one in your life, you could grow exponentially through that connective tissue. And look at this broad aspect for your own self-master. 
exponential is this growth. So master's fear only grows singularly. That's why they have to cram so much fear into you to stack it, to close you in, okay? But love is exponential, exponential. It means it multiplies upon itself. So you really don't even have to have a massive amount of friends and your consciousness can grow exponentially compared to shutting yourself off from everyone. How about the whole, the physical touch that can be so satisfying? We obviously can't get that online to be held, to be hugged, to, for someone to just grab our hands or our shoulder as, or to laugh together. There, yeah. There's something very satisfying yeah there is so you know masters volunteer work is amazing thank you it's amazing get out there and hold somebody's hand get out there and walk a dog and pet a cat get out there get you want it you want to have fun go to the children's hospital you'll get more hugs than you'll even know what to do with you'll be scraping them off of you by the end of the day that's what volunteer work is all about all about and it's volunteer with any other form of a sentient any other form of a sentient so whether that be an animal form or whether that be human form even plant form you want to go to botanical gardens you want to go into you know greenhouses and stuff where, where these things are being if you maybe you're a botanist maybe you literally just smelling those flowers creates that euphoric essence that shoots through your body as a high vibration say so we agree with you master and you know a few years ago you were all quarantined away from a uh, quarantined away from each other and that was unfortunately part of the social experiment to bring you down and break you into your sadness was to separate you from that connective touch now's right. the time to never allow that to happen again and to never certainly implement it upon your own self and get into your community and find out how you can volunteer and you will be saturated beautiful love it this is great Yo, the link for the special offer, April, type it in the chat box again, please, so everybody can find it. If you're listening on the replay, the link will be right underneath the video where you're watching the call. And let's go to Donna now. It's good to see you, Donna. Let's get you to unmute. Hi, John. Thank you. Okay, Casey, it's so nice to see you. My question is, um, I, I've been practicing, I've been in a mindfulness uh, presence practice for six or seven years now on a small group online. And it's uh, um, the space that exists for me in the absence of the overall volume of thought <laughs> that had previously been in my mind um, is uh, great. And what the kinds of connections I make here on BTO, trying this meditation, doing, getting these downloads, I'm able to move energy really easily. I find that I can fall right into whatever is being asked. And there's a lot of space. My question is, um, is there something more to do in that space? Or just continue <clears throat> what I'm doing? I, I think I'm waiting for, for direction, for downloads. I do have a lot of calm and a lot of peace, and a lot of appreciation. It's a practice. So Master, um, information doesn't just come through thoughts, but through feelings. So your next level of depth is to feel into your experience. Don't just think into your experience. So you can, some people receive thought first, then they activate an emotion to move a thought, and empaths feel first, and then they decipher thought through their perception or their feelings. So you are an empath master. So we would tell you that it is time for you to feel first, feel first. But in order to do that, you need to become familiar with what emotions feel like in the first place. So that means that you get to spend time feeling yourself, feeling yourself, master. Do you know that there is a different emotion for every possible thought? And since thoughts are infinite, so are emotions. So if you don't think you feel, 
then you need to put yourself into a priority of initiating and activating an emotional response. Use your five sensory systems to activate an emotion. Feel something, smell something, listen to something, look at something, taste something. It will activate an emotional response for you. Once you are in that emotion, then hold that emotion for as long as you can and see what thoughts follow. That is your next level. Thank you. Mm, beautiful. All right. Thank you, Donna. Let's continue our next caller, Christine. Welcome to the call. Hi. So um, I have recently just gotten in touch with a, a deep feeling that I'm, when I felt it, it came across as, well, first I'll go back to instant. I was in a, in a setting where someone was talking to me like a child and I didn't like it. And um, so later on, as I was processing, I got in this deep feeling of, I don't want to be here. And I didn't, I had this reaction of like, why is it that I'm, I'm having this, this, is this my truth? And then this other stuff that's processing up from there is from, from my, I'm recognizing my past is that somebody on your show said I had, um, as I connected with her, I said, I had a connection with Jesus that I saw him do miracles in another lifetime. And I, I then put together that I'm having a lot of grief ever since I'm a child, I was brought up in a strict fundamentalist religion. And I'd always have been grieving when I hear about Jesus and I feel very sad. And I feel like I'm being triggered. If I go to church with my dad, I'm being triggered into this sadness and I'm thinking it's something in connection to a relationship there in, in the past. And is that a wound that needs to be pulled out? Could be, Master. Um, it feels like you have unworthiness issues, you know, coming up for you, coming up for you. So when somebody speaks in a condescending manner, as you described, when you said that somebody spoke to you like you were a child, that's condensation that they're they're con they're speaking to you in a condescending manner. That triggers unworthiness. So you're not recognized for the intelligent, sovereign being that you authentically are, and that you need to be coddled or spoken down to. So that becomes a trigger of unworthiness, shame and unworthiness. Religion instills shame and unworthiness. It's part of its programming. So that's part of your triggering as well. It also always seems to put around a real sad and treacherous and horrible fear-based story around everything, around everything. Okay, so of course, it's got you reacting with fear. You want to just cry. It's like this story isn't right. Okay, the story isn't right. Okay, so that's what's probably coming up for you. It's programming that happens through religion. Your religions never tell you you are the empowered one. They don't. That it's it's just the way it is. It's not good or bad or right or wrong. It is is the way it is, and so it triggers these these states of shame and unworthiness with you and your soul is crying out no this is not authentic this is not in full alignment of all that i am and so that could be your conflict that is going on for you does that help you yeah i just like don't know how to be in the setting with my dad and not get into the shame and unworthiness up until now yet so i've got to work on that yeah, you, you get a master. There's all kinds of ways for you to practice the art of detachment. It is practicing the art of detachment. And all that simply means is masters, you simply be without a reactionary response to that which is imposed upon you. It is sitting in the space of isness without a reactionary component from your altered ego and fully accept that what is taking place is a demonstration of their level of consciousness. And that's it. 
It is not a thing for you to judge. It simply is an explanation. That helps you move into compassion and not sympathy. Sympathy is a judgment. It means you feel sorry for what is taking place. In other words, you think what is taking place is bad. Where compassion is just understanding what is taking place without having a reactionary component in, a, in, a, in response to what's going on. You just sit there calmly. So this is where you get to practice detachment, which is very valuable, Master, on your conscious journey to release old programming. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Lots of Thank you. Yeah, come back and listen to the replay, Christine. Definitely. Okay. Um, and really just even write it down when you go back and listen. Stop and start and just, yeah, there's so much here for you. It's wonderful mm -hmm. for all of us, truly. Um, Stephanie wrote in, hello, beautiful light beings. I first came across Casey and Julius on John's show back in 2019. I'm beyond grateful because I've since been on an expanded consciousness journey and self-awareness along with Julius and the Julius tribe. And I cannot recommend the deeper dedicated teacher. I agree. Gift this incredible opportunity to yourself. It will level you up and accelerate in the remembrance that you are a source. Thank you, Stephanie, for writing that. And I would agree with you on the acceleration and the dedication of Casey and the love from Julius just seeing us, knowing us in our empowered place. Uh, it's just that we get to see ourselves in that place and get to hold it and honor it with the reverence in which it is gifted as well. Um, so amazing what comes through. Um, Y'all, I want to call on everybody and, and get into this deeper. We're going to have to have Casey back on next season and get into more Q&A because it's wonderful. Um, but in the meantime, the special offer is right there. And it is extraordinarily generous with the time that we get and what's available to be, to be transformed and revealed as we get to know ourselves in a more intimate and awakened manner. And for me, that's what spirituality is. It's the opportunity to get to know ourselves in ways that we never have experienced before. Um, and how beautiful is that? With that, Julius, is, is there any, any inspiration that you want to share um, before we end this evening's call? Masters, keep going. Keep mm. going. There is so much more. It is indescribable as to what awaits you, that you create for your own selves. But do it with love. Do it with excitement. Do it knowing, Masters, that you shall never cease, that you shall never finish knowing yourselves. And let that be your greatest joyous experience. When you do this, Masters, you shine the light onto another for self-discovery. That is the spreading of consciousness. For you are not just doing your own conscious awareness, Masters. You are doing all conscious awareness. You see, Masters, you're the only one that's here. You are not singular and separate. You are unified. You are unified, collective, fractalized thoughts. And you are coming back to remembering that truth. Keep pushing. Because if you have any aspect of joy in your life now, it is nothing compared to the reward of what awaits you for your continuum. We are honored to see you. We are honored to be called by you. We send you love and extraordinary expansiveness on your journey until the next time, as it will be. Thank you. Dang, Casey. That's Thank amazing. you, everybody, for having me on your show. Thank you so much. It's it's such a pleasure to be here. So wonderful to have you back. Thank you for, for everything. The special offer. Thank you to your team. Thank you to Julius. And thank you for your dedication and then sharing. Thank this you, with John. You're, well, you're a big part of it. You've been with me since the very, very early. And you guys are in such great company and you're in such safe hands with John. I know you all know that. But I just want to express my gratitude to all of you for inviting me into this private space of yours on a Monday evening. It's it's really it's really a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, y'all. I love y'all so much. I'm so excited for what's coming. I'm excited for where we are. 
I'm excited for where we are and then what's possible beyond that. Casey, I'm excited for you and to get to experience you. Y'all, the link for the special offer and the experience of Julius and Casey also is there. Click on it now before we hang up so that you don't lose it if you haven't clicked on it already. Um, and of course, we'll send it on the replay. Um, and until our next call, y'all, have a wonderful evening. Namaste. Love and blessings. I look forward to seeing y'all soon. Bye-bye, y'all.